congregation can as always remain seated till we get to Golgotha, but also read the parts of the crowd in those times too. So, what? When or where? When, right, during while we're singing What Wondrous Love Is This, right before the gospel. And the narrator is Chorus, and Jesus is being read by Jason. Yeah, that's, the, that's what it's saying. That's when she goes up to read the Passion Gospel. Oh, my song is Love Unknown. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, we'll begin on page three of your advocate, if you're ready. As I said, it's organized bedlam. <laughs> Some things never change. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what he had been spoken saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and a, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds went, that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love which you have redeemed us through, with which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy day of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that those who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now we begin our procession, palms waving in some excitement, please. The King of Glory comes the nation.
Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, 
in your tender love for the human race, who sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my ears with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my thoughts are A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, 
even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the time of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, you will be done. And he came again and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So, leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping? and taking your rest. See, the hour is, hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, At once he came up to Jesus and said, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then could the scriptures be fulfilled, which say, this must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were abandoned? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. 
But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were asking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. The high priest stood up and said, But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck me? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, But he denied it before all of them, saying, When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. He said, But they said, Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are alive. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the thirty pieces of silver the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so, you say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, But he gave them no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. 
Now, at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, And they said, Pilate said to them, All of them said, Then he asked, But they shouted all the more. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, Then the people as a whole answered, So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, say to yourself, If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He said to you cannot save yourself. If he is The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani. That is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see what Elijah will come to say. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice, 
and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, There are a lot of questions asked in this Passion Gospel we just heard. Questions such as, Who are you? Are you the King of the Jews? What has this man done wrong? What should we do with him? And then that penultimate question in a sense, Who shall I release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus of Galilee who is called the Messiah? And all these questions highlight what is happening in this week in Jerusalem or what is still happening today. You may have remember I've said before, Palm Sunday, we immediately go to thinking of the procession which we reenacted this morning of Jesus and his disciples coming in from the Mount of Olives on the, west, on the eastern side of Jerusalem. They come in and they attract a crowd. Probably some kids thought, well, this is like fun, and others were curious enough, but the crowd grew and they began to, everyone wanted to see, wanted to see who this man Jesus had heard about was. And so the parade starts, Jesus on a donkey, with people putting their cloaks and waving branches and singing Hosanna in the highest, and proclaiming, maybe just because everyone else was, or maybe out of hope, or maybe for a few really believing. This is the Messiah, the one who comes in the name of, the, of God. But we often don't realize or remember that there was a second parade entering Jerusalem that day. From the west, from the coast, Caesarea Philippi, Pontius Pilate and a legion of Roman soldiers are marching into the city. And into contrast with Jesus who comes in on a donkey, who presents proclaim his king, they come in with all the symbols and trappings of the power of, Im of imperial Rome. The legions in their uniforms, their high-stepping horses, their shining shields, their flags, their banners. They come in to make a statement that we are the real king, Rome. And as the week builds, and as we swat, go through it this week, if you read the scriptures for the days of this week, you see this tension between these two understandings of kingship becoming more and more tense to the point that by Friday it comes to a head and something has happened. And it's more than just the idea of kingship. What is at the heart of it is what do we mean when we talk about the quest for peace. Well, this is the time in the Mediterranean Basin that was known as the Pax Romana, the Roman peace. It was a time of relative calmness, unity, cohesiveness. But it was peace based on one thing, the power and might of Rome. The ability to conquer and subjugate to divide peoples and then put them back together as they chose, and to control with an iron fist if necessary. That's why Pontius Pilate and the legions are coming into Jerusalem, the beginning of Holy Week. 
The time of the Passover is always a time of high emotions. Jewish nationalism would be at high fever pitch, and they came to make sure that no one got a crazy idea that they could overthrow the Roman overlords, proclaim a Messiah, and find freedom. They came to keep the peace. By contrast, Jesus is the one who talks about peace. Not through the power of the sword. Those who live by the sword shall die by it, he says. Not through subjugation, but through justice. Through justice which is based in the acknowledgement and recognition of every human being as God's beloved. Through justice which calls for that giving, sharing, and caring for the stranger in their midst. For justice it talks about reshaping a community and a society where all are honored, all are cared for, and the needs of all are met. It's a different concept of peace. And the two concepts of peace simply could not coexist. And so we have Good Friday. Now, I would suggest to you that as with, you know, with all the events of Holy Week and the events of our faith, this is not simply something that happened 2,000 plus years ago in Jerusalem. This is still the reality of the world today. We are still at, faced with that question. What definition of peace will we buy into? The peace that comes through the sword, through might, through, if I may say so, another gun, or the peace that comes through justice? compassion, and mercy of God. There are still choices we should, must make. We are still those who are standing in the crowd and have to decide which side we will come down on, how we will live as a people committed to Jesus Christ, what it will mean in practical manners to say, we believe that peace through justice is the answer, not peace through power. How will we be agents of reshaping our own lives, the lives of our community, and the lives of the world in this truth? So Palm Sunday is a chaotic Sunday, and it's a challenging Sunday because it still asks us, who do you say that Jesus is? And who say he is the Prince of Peace? Then we, what peace are we looking for? Amen. We will continue with the prayers of the people. Though willing in spirit, we are still weak in the flesh. So let us appeal to God's mercy, saying, Help us, O Lord. Lord. O Lord, let the same mind be in your church that was in Christ Jesus. With bended knee and confessing tongues, make us able to live his way of humility and obedience. Help us, O Lord. Lord, Almighty God, in your tender love, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus, to take upon him our human nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Give us hearts also to love every human being. Help us, O Lord. Lord, O oh God, bless the trees. In celebration of your Son, we waved their branches. In our sinful violence, we took what you made good and crafted a wooden cross. O oh God, bless the trees. Help us, O oh Lord. Merciful God, look upon our beautiful city. Forgive us our violent ways even in hard times. Let us not become a reproach to our neighbors. 
Make your face to shine upon the city. Help us, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, we pray for those who are wasted by grief, whose years are filled with sigh. We pray for those whose strength has failed and whose bones are consumed. In your loving kindness, save them. From our parish, from our parish prayer list, we especially remember Darlene Jenkins, Sue Judd, Brenda McGregor, Lavina Messimer, Sally Neal, Georgie Dixon, and those who we now name either silently or aloud. The unknown pedestrian who struck this morning. Help us, O oh Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, you took human form. You died on the cross. You shared with us life and death. We trust the dead to your care. We trust our lives to you. We especially remember Harold L. Haycook, Lena Haycook, Judith K. Hazen, John D. Hazen, Mildred L. Heberlin, and all the victims of the recent tornadoes in Mississippi and the victims of the school shooting in Nashville. Help us, O oh Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty and ever living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear the prayer, our prayers for this parish family, strengthen the faithful, arouse the parish, and restore the living. Grant us all things necessary for our common life. And bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated. We can talk about the now. We were the child earlier. One is, I hope you will. Friday noon and 7 p.m. And at 7 p.m. we are listed on the March of Prayer to the Mansfield as the as the event for Friday for Good Friday Friday evening. So we have our condition to it too. So I hope we hear that you all uh, come and pray that day. And the next Sunday we're going to have services at 8 and 10 a.m. We will have the brass quartet and we will have the organ and yeah. So make sure my friend and kind of me here is to celebrate the Lord's resurrection. Also, if you've been using the mic off calendar, you can start bringing those back for uh, next Sunday. And we will be collecting those monies that came with the calendar for Lent practices and we'll be reporting that to the Bishop's Guild for the Diocese of Ohio for the community services. And we have 21 or 22 who have now signed up to go with us to Cleveland on April 29th. Consecration of Andy Charlie as the next bishop of the Ohio. We want to go, you need to join us quickly, sign up quickly. We have 27 slots before we have to sign up with the number in another day. We have some people coming from Shelby, some from Ashland, and then a large group of you. This is me and I this is an opportunity that if you don't get to see too many eyes in your lifetime in the church. Consecration of the bishop. First one in Ohio in about 19. So, we will be leaving the public on our as I said, the boss of the band will leave here at 8 45 Saturday morning, $20 per person, which is less than you can make gas park. The living in the public auditorium, follow the service, we'll be a reception downstairs for the public auditorium. The intention is to leave there by about 2 30, so we're back by about 4. So, I encourage you to sign up, sheet to sign up.
The service continues with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Let us have the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, for our sins he was lifted high on the cross, that he might draw all the world to himself. And by his suffering death, he might become a source of eternal salvation to all who would trust in him. Therefore, we pray, joining our voices with the angels and our angels that with all the world you have, who forever sing his hymn and claim the glory of your name.
gifts of God for the people of God. Marshall will have the cup for those who choose to receive by intinction, and Tom will have the cup for those who choose to drink, to drink from it. And the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, Connie, the bread of heaven. Lord, I you. Diane, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, Carol, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Make the body of Christ. The bread of
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage love and serve you in gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Two things. One, last day to sign up to make contributions for Easter flowers or brass to have your name in the advocate next week. Tear it off the back, put it in the plate if you'd like. And join us downstairs. Even if you didn't bring food, I was down there. There's plenty. Join us. <laughs>